I don't think I have a choice. All right, here we go. It's the Instant Reacts podcast for week number six. It's unscripted. It's uncontrollable. It's Brian Stocking, Matt Randazzo, Greg Armstrong. We have no Celia. We have no Cuffler. Celia has now been off two weeks in a row from this podcast. I, we may just have to like I kick her it out. Matter. She doesn't listen anyway. So that's true. She doesn't listen, which is very hurtful. Yeah, yeah that does hurt. Yeah. So all right, we all know football is a very physical game. Football is a rough sport. Yep. Injuries happen. And, man, this year we got one of our own, one of our own battling injury. Brian Stocking with a cast on his hand. Stock, what happened? You, you took, a, took a shot to the arm there. What's going on? Give me the play that knocked you out of the game. What happened? It didn't knock me out of the game. I'm still here. Oh, um, there we go. Okay, that's true. That's true. He's playing injured. <laughs> he's, <laughs> yeah, he's ready to go. Yeah, it's, he's playing injured. Here we go. What happened was I was substituting at Central in uh, ROTC, and they had PT physical training. And I was lean. One of the, I was in one of the drills, and it was a backwards running drill. Why were you in one of the drills? Because that's what we do. Okay, I, you know, I don't we, know. We, we you know we show the students what they're supposed to be doing, and you know trying to show them what they're doing. So it was a backwards running drill, and I'm backwards running. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And I either I tripped over my own two feet or the little gremlins that the invisible gremlins that are in George Marshall gym got me. Oh, it was no. definitely it was definitely it the gremlins. Was, it was inside on the gym. Yeah, on the hard floor, on the hard new floor that is brand new. I don't think the old one was much softer. <laughs> no, I'm it's sure hard, it is hardwood. It's not like they got an extra hardwood. Hard it's true. It's true. So I fall backwards. And I fall backwards, and I hit my hand, I hit my arm, hit my head. Oh, yeah. You know, there, <laughs> oh, man. there was no, you know, no, no concussion or anything, but um, I noticed that my hands were starting to hurt, my uh, elbow was starting to hurt. So I went to, so that happened last Tuesday. So last week I, I was able to tough it out. We're losing that. listeners. I was going to say, here we go, like, well, all right, 30 minutes later. So I'm, I'm getting there. Right, you wanted to know, so I'm telling the truth. I, you know, I could have said backhanded Cuffler. You know, that's why he's not here this week. Ooh. But, but um, I uh, broke a bone in my hand, in my left hand. That's why they cast it up at ORA. I've also got a bone broken in my elbow, in my right elbow. So hopefully, so Monday I go to ORA. Hopefully they'll take this stupid cast off and they'll say, hey, your arm's all right and we can go on. I, I, I don't know if I should ask a question how long the answer will be, but what was the reaction of the kids when that happened? Were they to your rescue in a heartbeat? Did, were there snickles and laughs? They were concerned, and then they saw that I was all right, so they, you know, they went on. I so mean, then they laughed. No, they didn't laugh. There was no laughing. But um, you know, this is the first time in my 46 years that I've ever had a cast or a sling, and I've got the sling in my car because I can't type with the sling. So, Are you in, are you in pain right now? No, I'm not in pain I, at all. You're not taking painkillers, are you? No. Stock? No. Those can be... I don't do painkillers. I can't. Okay, we I yes. I can't take yeah. pills. I can't take pills. I have to have chewable aspirin. That's about All it. All right, he's so he's toughing it out here. Did it affect your game tonight, Stocking? Um, no. You're kind of like one of those offensive linemen that like breaks a pinky, but they stay in the game and they wear that big old club for a fist hand. That's what you're doing. You're toughing it out. I, didn't I can't any- believe I just compared Brian Stocking to an offensive lineman. I, first. That's a first. <laughs> I didn't put any metal in it like in my cast like Conrad Dobler used to, you know, back in the 70s. Nope. Yeah, good reference there. Okay. No. Nope. All right. Exactly. Let's, oh, let's fast forward. If, the game. if if you're still listening, God bless you. Let's let's fast <laughs> forward. Let's fast forward literally 50 years. We're out of 1970 now. Stocking. No, you know what? I'm not going to you first. You just talked for 30 minutes. <laughs> Matt Randazzo, your instant reacts. What stands out to you? That Galesburg Rock Island game sound sounded crazy. I know you were there for first half of it, so I don't want to talk too much on it. But two teams that had a lot to play for. And you look at Galesburg, we, we got to do our score on the road today, talked to uh, Coach Blackwell, great guy, really got to know him a little bit, really impressed with him 
And um, they've been playing great. And they had an opportunity at home on homecoming to get back to 500, get to three wins with three games left. You start adding things up and, and figuring out how they get into the playoffs. It was a big game for them. It was a big game for Rock Island, who's still in the Western Big Six race. So they based, they won 33-30 in overtime. Greg can kind of go through with what he saw. But a big game for both teams. And, and hats off to Rock Island. Just We were sitting here two weeks ago talking about something that that um, Ben Hammer is tired of us talking about, I'm sure, and, and Rock Island fans in general are. So hats off to them after what happened two weeks ago to get back-to-back victories, first blowing out UT and then going on the road to, which Greg and I have talked about a lot, a very talented Galesburg team and figuring out a way to get the job done. Hats off to, to Rock Island. Yeah, and I, I hate to bring up the negative immediately when I start talking about Rock Island, but credit to them for overcoming 20 penalties to keep themselves in the game and come out with the victory in overtime. They shot themselves in the foot several times when I was there in the first half. They had a touchdown called back, um, several other key plays that kind of pushed them back and kind of, you know, kept them from kind of advancing the chains. But, man, I tell you what, when you got um, Tongo on the ground running the ball, uh, Quintarian Brooks running the ball well, and when Reese is finding Kai Rios, there's, man, there's some dynamic playmakers for Rock Island. If they can just get out of their own way and limit the penalties, man, they looked really good. And I tell you what, I give credit to Galesburg because Galesburg was able to kind of keep them in check. And obviously the game was close. Galesburg took a, a lead into the third quarter, into the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. 27-19, I think, in the middle of the fourth quarter. Probably like, probably like four or five minutes to go there. Up by eight. Rocky... Made a pick. Got a, I think I. I think they got a pick six to make or uh, to or an interception to get the ball back at, at, at when they were down twenty seven nineteen. Went down, scored the touchdown, scored the two, got the ball back, and set up for a game winning field goal. The snap was bad at the end of regulation, and and the game had to go, and the game went to overtime. So Rocky had gut check twice where it would have been real easy for for a team of lesser grit to say, oh, this is against us where he can't win. Rocky's showing true grit twice, having their heart, you know, having to come back and do it. And they, want, and they were able to hold Galesburg to a field goal. Then uh, Xander George, 10-yard TD run, wins it in overtime, 33-30. A lot of grit from that Rocky team. That, that shows Ben Hammer and those coaches instilling grit and, uh, and heart in that team. A lot of grit. We got a lot of grit. Today's podcast brought to you by the word grit. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will follow you and say that, yes, that is a gutsy win, gritty win, grit, 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 win from Rock Island. But Stock, come on now. If any team is in the fourth quarter in week six against a, wet, oh, against a conference opponent, they're not going to give up and say, well, it's not our week, I, I guess. Was, Come I, on, Stock. I wasn't saying they weren't going to give up. They were just going to give up. But a lot of times it's hard to redouble those. They had to redouble those efforts after they scored, after they got their hearts broken a couple of times. That's a double-double effort. They redoubled their efforts. Their efforts. <laughs> I think that's what it, they quadrupled their efforts. Yeah. No, hats off to Rock Island. A really big victory. They're 3-1 and one in conference play. And Moline and Sterling still have to play each other. Um, the Galesburg and, 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 and Moline next week in a huge game for, for Galesburg. Their last two games, I think they have United Township and Alleman still left on the schedule. Um, Alleman's winnable game. United Township is a winnable game, but not easy. And so that would get them to four. They have two wins. They, they got to run the table now, and they go to Moline next week on a, a Moline team that's playing lights out especially on the defensive side of the football. That, that's another impressive victory by them. Galesburg is just snake-bitten. Like, they're just, they're just that team this year that – and it's, you know, some of their own doing. But, man, this was a game that it was theirs. It was right there. And, I, you know, I won't take anything away from them. I, I would credit Rock Island for making the plays and getting the job done. Stock, I know there's potential for some – four and five teams to get in. Obviously, Galesburg doesn't want to go that route. Right. Can 
The big, I know we've talked about it with the smaller schools. Can that happen in the bigger schools? Can a four and five team make the playoffs this year? Yeah, because um, what they're going to do is once you once they exhaust the the playoff field. Yeah, and then if they if there are four and five teams that make it, it's playoff points. It's not just because what they do is uh, the entire field. Once the field is chosen, then it's broken down into thirty two into the thirty two teams be a class. So if Galesburg has a high number at four and five, and there are some four and five teams to be taken, Galesburg could fit that bill because of the strength of the Western Big Six. And also, we're just sleeping on something. Next week, Sterling and your boy John Schlemmer have to go to Rocky and play the Rocks, and it's never an easy... I think it's at Rocky. They have it's an easy. It, that's never an easy game playing at Rocky. That's a good one. So they go. Um, Sterling has Rock Island at Rock Island next week, and then they host Moline probably the next week. Yeah, that's the way it looks. That's what my that's, says. That's a gauntlet for Sterling. That's tough. They get the win tonight at home against Quincy. Moline gets the huge win over rival United Township. Stock, what's the point total in their last three games for Moline? 160 points. Ooh, but boy. To zero. Yeah. To but nothing, to, yeah. To nothing. But to e- this is even bigger. For the first time since 1950. He loves this. Here we Moline go. Moline has shut out three straight conference opponents. In 1950, it was Galesburg. It was Kiwani. And it was East Moline because United Township was not yet United Township. It was East Moline. And interspersed in that, in between the Galesburg and Kiwani shutout, was a shutout of Freeport. So they shut out four teams in a row. Three of them in the conference of the Northwest Conference, my friends. All right. We give Stock a lot of guff That's for good. some stats. That is unbelievable. That's good. That's not fool's gold. That's gold. That's real gold. Like, when we got back tonight, I, I, I thought about that at halftime because I'm like, no offense to UT, but, like, they, they weren't moving the football. I'm like, this is – they could win for th- – and I came back, I said, and he already knew. He, like, had it, had oh, it loaded man. up, ready to go. I said, that's the stockpile stat of the night. I don't want to hear that somebody had four touchdowns. I don't want to have a box score. I want, like, that is gold. So, very good job. Well done. Thank you. All right, let's move into the Three Rivers Athletic Conference. And, man, Princeton making a statement against Sterling Newman. What was the final in that one? 41 to nothing Princeton. I would have never believed that a Newman team would get beat that badly. 41 nothing. It was like 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter. It was like 28 nothing at halftime. You don't see the blue machine get taken apart like that by anybody. I mean, I can't I think the last time I think one year Riverdale did beat them when Newman was okay, down. Right. Homer <laughs> alert. Yeah. I, I know one year Newman was down and it was the final game of the season. Riverdale had they were one of their better teams and they beat them like 40 to 12. That was the last time I can remember a Newman team getting beat like they got beat tonight. Always dwelling in the negative, no, stocking. Negative. Let's talk. Let's about, talk. Yeah. Let's talk Princeton. Yeah. Princeton they needed they needed to bounce back and this was a team that, man, we've praised them for good reason because they've looked so good on offense and so good overall. And they ran into a they ran into the hottest team in our area, probably in Kiwani, maybe outside of Moline. I'm, I'm going to make him scurry to his books. When was the last time Princeton lost a regular season game before last week? Mm, Think probably 2000. I want to say 2018. Yeah, so like, so they had a long and winning streak. Take nothing away from Kiwani and Coach Swanson. They did a fantastic job last week. Great game. Greg was there the whole time because I was really nice. Yep. And that so awesome for Kiwani. But Princeton, each week going in, each week and winning games and winning, sometimes losses can be a good thing. And and I felt going into this game that that loss. It wasn't a good thing, but it was it was a wake up call. It re-energized them. I I I saw a bounce back coming. I didn't see forty one donut, but I saw a bounce back coming. And then you flip that, and Kiwani goes to Hall and has to grind out a close victory against a Hall team that's one and five now. Yeah, they're 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 gonna miss the playoffs. But um, I was thinking, they, again oh, the oh, negative. Princeton has now won thirteen in a row at home, and look at some of the wins they've had this year. They Plastered Rockridge. 
They put a lot of points up against Mendota. Now this is their third straight big time victory over a name opponent and putting a lot of points on the board. So I think maybe last week was it was not a, it was maybe a blip or an aberration and not a and not a beginning of a trend. All right, back to me. Um, <laughs> I, I I think Princeton's a really good football team. They're going to look back at that game and maybe we get that rematch again in the postseason. And, and it was a great game, taking nothing away from Kiwani. But I think they'll look at that as a. A, almost a wake-up call and a motivating factor, and, and that's still a really good Princeton team. They've lost one game in like four years in the regular season, whatever it is, three years. That's an awesome Princeton team. Nothing changed. Nothing changed overnight. So um, congratulations to them and, and hats off to them. And Kiwani, a little let down, but they still got the job done, and that's all that matters. So, hey, so I would say, hold on, I'm talking stocking. <laughs> <laughs> I would say on the flip side where you pointed out that, you know, sometimes a loss is a good thing. It's a motivator. Obviously, you never want to lose. But for Princeton, it was that wake up call it gets you kind of refocused a little bit. I think on the opposite side, I think coming off of the big win over Princeton, I think this Kiwani team benefits from having to play a tight game. Yeah. I think it's that reminder of like, man, you're the hunted now. And you can't just show up and win a game. No. And, and the Three Rivers, they, I mean, and I'm not saying this, that they listened to the, but there was a ton of positive press, ton of positive love for that team. And you, I mean, they're 16 to 18 year old kids. Like they're going to listen to that. So this gets them, I think you're exactly right, refocused on, on what can continue to be a special season. And they get that lesson. Without an L. That's the best part of it. And they get that wake-up call, but they still got the job done. They still got a victory. They're 6-0 in the season. And that's you look at the standings, 6-0 and in first place. So, Man, Hall is a better team yeah. than a one-win team. They played Mendota tough a week ago. And they played Kiwani, who's maybe a little better than Mendota. We'll find out. I think they haven't played yet this year. But they played Kiwani really tough as well. And it, so, I, yeah, we'll... It's very interesting that Hall's come up short, but they played so well. Yeah, Hall was up at halftime in this game, fourteen to twelve, and had you know was got and had Kiwani uh, sweating it all the way to the end. Now the question I was going to ask Dazzo is: so if Kiwani and Princeton meet in the regu- in the playoffs, are you going to send Greg for the whole game again, or are you going to uh, send someone else, Greg? I'll go. Yeah, I already got it. Yeah. Well, Pearson might jump in. I I, I would default to the go. I would default to Pearson. Yeah. Uh, Go back to Thursday night. Monmouth Roseville gets the come from behind victory against Orion. They were down twenty eight fourteen, I believe. Twenty eight fourteen. 28-14 28-14 going into the second half. Monmouth Roseville scored twice in the second half, cut it to 28-26 because they went for two and didn't get either conversion. And then with 19 seconds left, Silas Brown, who almost had 300 total yards passing, or total yards running and passing, um, scored a touchdown to, to get the victory 34-28. That's Monmouth Roseville's first ever victory over Orion. couple different things that stand out to me with this one is hats off to Monmouth Roseville, fifth straight victory, playing great football. Um, you mentioned Hall, and that's a good football team, and Orion. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a, gr- a gritty, gutty effort because they played last week on a Saturday, and they hung with Erie, Erie Prophetstown yep, for a thing. long time. And then things the, the, the final score wasn't indicative of how close that game was. Yep. And then to go on the road and to lose this one, tough loss for Chip Filler and company. They'll bounce back, and they'll be a spoiler throughout the rest. So that, that's their f- fourth loss. I believe so. Run the table yeah. and get to five yeah, and four. Five. And they host Morrison next week. Yeah, I think they have Morrison left. They have Rock Ridge left, and then somebody else along the way. Obviously, he's going to go look. God bless him. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, tough loss for Orion, but Monmouth Roseville finds a way to get it done. A historic win for them, and five straight victories for Jeremy Adolfson. All right, let's go through. What else do we got? Oh, but what Orion's at, at? They host Morrison at Sherrard, and then they play Rock Ridge in Week Nine. Rockridge had a gutty, gutsy game. Braden Deem, three touchdowns, ran for two. Rockridge and Morrison struggled for a long time. It was 13-8 for a long time. Braden Deem scored, and then Rockridge had a touchdown at the end to beat Morrison 27-8. Rockridge keeps their playoff hopes on, uh, on, high, on high alert. On high, on high alert. <laughs> what what Eerie, does that mean? Erie Prophetstown gets the win tonight. We had Jesse Abbott on WQAD. Great interview. Hold on a second. We, did, we should have started the show with this. Stockpile, how great was it to see 
Greg back in action calling highlights and calling plays. I didn't know who he was at first. And then it was like, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. Yeah, you've seen me. You just, yeah, I haven't seen I me out on, out on set. You know, yeah. now that you're a big timer, you're on set every week now. So, you know, you've, you're so big time now that. Yeah, right. No, it was good. It was fun. We appreciate you still filling in for Cuff. Obviously, he's here with us every Friday shooting games. But um, always fun to have you. You're, it's it's goofy when, when Greg's around. We, we got you with the wrong game on accident. We didn't do it on purpose, but a ton of fun, so we appreciate you doing that, and um, it, was, it was good. So if, if you're listening to the View from the West podcast and you, you didn't check out the score, you can check out the score at WQAD, uh, at, at the score WQAD on Twitter, and check it out. You did a great job. You actually, I've discovered this year, uh, you can go to YouTube and search yeah. WQAD the score, and every week is live streamed. Yeah. And so it's an easy way to watch the show. Don't listen to anything I say during the breaks. Yeah, you've been pretty good. You've been pretty yeah, tame. I've listened to them. I know. They get interesting, so I forget sometimes. <laughs> the old Matt Randazzo would have been fired by It now. would have been bad, yeah. yeah. It would have been really bad. So the older, wiser Matt Randazzo, <laughs> he's got it covered. Mendota gets the big win tonight over Sherrard. Uh, quick uni view note, they went all purple at home for homecoming against Sherrard. They. Know. Uh, it looked good. They, me and Mitch were very excited because they had no, teased I us. I listened. They did, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I yeah. They had teased us a little bit and said that they were gonna, you know, bust something out. So that's so that was good. So credit to them. Um, I picks? think. Did you see pics? Yeah, Mitch got pictures. Mitch was in control of the Twitter account tonight. So yep, we got some pictures. What was it? Somebody said that like Greg's tweeting at himself. I'm like, no, Mitch is probably doing the Twitter. And Greg, because he's like, hey, it was the, uh, the podcast. Yes, like, yeah. Hey, at Greg, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, he's not tweeting to himself. He's not, <laughs> you're not <laughs> Come on now. Come on. I, I know he's probably split personality. And <laughs> like like Randy Orton, he hears voices in his head. But. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I'll go look at him. Are they on your guys? I believe that, yeah. I believe that Mitch, Mitch had him tweeted out. So, uh, yeah, thank you to uh, Mendota for giving us. Quick shout out, Stock. Any stats that stand out for the Three Rivers before we move along? Uh, yeah, you always got something. St. Bede tonight. Yeah, there you go. Valley. John Brady, two touchdown passes. The Bruins are ten and two in their last twelve games. They're going to be a tough team in the playoffs. Yeah, they look really good. Tyreek Fortney, week in and week out, that kid's getting the job done. He had a run tonight. Uh, man, it looked really cool. Yeah, he had a run that looked great tonight on the highlights. Uh, Stock, is that it? Have we run through everything in the Three Rivers? Um, well, you can say no. You Yari, can say we're good. Yari Prophets Town beat my Riverdale Rams 42-6. Yep, we referenced that. Jesse Abbott was on the show. Great win for Erie Prophets Town. I don't want to dwell on the negative. Riverdale's having a tough year. But for Erie Prophets Town, they put themselves right in the mix for a conference divisional championship in the Three Rivers. So huge credit to them because we've talked about it. I don't think that was necessarily a name, a team that stood out to us to potentially win a division. So they're right in the mix. Looks like it's going to be them and Monmouth Roseville. So that is really exciting. Stocking. I believe that is week eight. Monroe's and who? Monroe's and Erie Prophetstown. Oh, let me see. No, EP's at at Bureau Valley and Monroe's is at Riverdale on a Thursday. Uh, October 15th, week week eight at Coach Dobre Field. Ooh, I might be headed out to Coach Dobre Field on uh, on that night, on that Friday night, week Week eight. eight. That is very exciting. You're going to be making some trips down south there, Monroe's. uh, That's the same week as uh, A-Town Knoxville. But that one's on a... That was Saturday, Saturday, right? Night, yeah. yeah, so I don't know if I can get out two nights in a row. So that's a good segue to get to that conference, Lincoln Trail Conference. You went to – you got to punch something? Okay, now we're all good. You went out to Knoxville tonight, two new teams in the Lincoln Trail, and, and both of them have been impressive. Last week, A-Town beat A&W, and tonight it was Knoxville doing the same. Your thoughts on what you saw early on at Knoxville? So, yeah, um, I shot two offensive plays for Knoxville, and both were touchdowns of, I think, 50-plus yards. So, Kellen McClay, Peyton Hankins, guys that, you know, we've read about these names – uh, this is my first time seeing Knoxville in person, and they are the definition of that old school ground and pound team. Like they're gonna attack you on the ground, and man, credit to their offensive line. They're creating holes that are just massive. I mean, like, but but on the flip side, their running backs are fast, athletic, and they don't waste the opportunity. When they when they get the opening, they're gone. And it was it was really impressive to see. 
especially considering that it was against Anawan Weathersfield, a well-coached team, a team that knows how to win football games. It, it was an impressive effort tonight from Knoxville. They're 6-0, and so they are a playoff team now. They've, they've locked in the playoffs. A-Town got the forfeit win this week. They are now 6-0. and uh, they were supposed to play Havana, yeah. who ended up, I think, COVID cancellation. Yeah. So, what, what, was that a late cancellation? It, it happened a couple days ago. Okay. It was yeah. week. So they're now 6-0. and So, man, you talk about the newbies in the Lincoln Trail Conference, both sitting at 6-0. and They're on a crash course for week eight. I, I don't know who they have next week, but those two teams play in week eight. They are, I mean, they're leading the way right now. Um, we have A-Town hosting Princeville who got beat by Mercer County tonight, and Knoxville goes to Illini West. Okay, so Knoxville has the non-conference game. I don't know what Illini West record is right off the top of my head. They're not too bad. They're They're usually a great program. I'll be texting Chris Stewart as we get done with this to see if they're covering that game. But, yeah, obviously that'll be a really good game on a Saturday night. You mentioned Mercer County. They go on the road to Princeville, get a victory, I think, 32-6, to because I tried to do the math on TV, and that was bad. <laughs> but in 26 Don't look at me. Three, they've been playing really good football. They got down 6 nothing in that game, scored the next 32 points. They get back to 3-3, three and three, and we've kind of talked about with – so Anawan Weathersfield now at 3-3, three and three, Mercer County now at 3-3. Three and three. We'll see those two kind of on a collision course for week nine and what happens there. So two really good football teams, and those are usually the two football teams that, that we talk about. Those are the powers of the conference. So it's kind of funny that the two new kids on the block are, are, are battling for that top spot, and then right behind them are the, the two, maybe the old guard with two. And so Mercer County, obviously, um, an up-and-down start to the season. but they And they, they're a team that if they get to five wins – yeah, they want to get to six. They want to win out and all that kind of stuff. But playing a Farmington and Knoxville on their record and all that kind of stuff, their playoff points are going to be enough that I think they're going to be fine with five wins. So um, congratulations to Andrew Hofer and, and, and their victory tonight. I think when you look at um, this season, we're going to have a lot of very interesting Week 9 games. you got Mirko and uh, A&W could be, for a play- could be both teams fighting for their playoff lives. Orion Rock Ridge, both teams could be fighting for their playoff lives. So, I mean, there are a lot of very intriguing Week 9 games already, and we're only in Week 6. I mean, this is amazing how big the season, how big we, we're getting towards the end of the season. United. I want to talk about yeah. Monmouth United because yeah. they continue to win. Um, They're 3-3 three and three. Is it They're Declan, three and three is now. Is Declan or Carmack? Cormack. Cormac Flynn. Cormack Flynn, six touchdowns tonight, four rushing a TD reception, and a kickoff return. Red, the Red Storm had 54 points in the first half. They were up 54-20 on Ridgeway at halftime. And uh, running clocked them. I mean, this United team is 3-3 three and three for the first time since 2015. United, I mean, next week, United hosts Robo Williamsfield, and that is not a gimme because Robo Williamsfield tonight ran, uh, ran Stark County 44-8. Robo Williamsfield, you know how many rushing yards they had? 451! I did not in know, home, but I knew. On homecoming. I knew you would tell me. I. You are amazing. <laughs> he is amazing. I know. The I know. Passion, the knowledge. God, you're an institution. <laughs> <laughs> Someone put me in one. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. Kriak, huge credit to United and head coach David Milroy. That's a proud program. That you go back about. It's probably been about ten years ago now, but that was the team that we would talk about alongside of Mercer County yeah. and alongside of Anawan Weathersfield. Mm-hmm. And even before Anawan Weathersfield really jumped onto the scene, United was the team and Stark County was the team we United, talked about. United won state one year with Tim Engelbranson right after they got created. I think it was, what, 2006? They won, they won in 04, and that was their first oh, year first of existence, year. yeah. Oh, so that that's time. the thing, a very proud program, and um, I just, I, I'm happy to see them getting wins. Um, what else in the Lincoln Trail? Did we well, get everything? I just want to get back with United. About three, four years ago, United had a player crunch where they only had like maybe 15, 20 kids on the, on the varsity roster. And there was questions, will they drop? Will they uh, merge? Will they go eight player? And they've rebuilt that program. A lot of hard work down there by the United people. And they, are very, they should be very proud of what they've done. They've, they've really, really built that program. Yep. It's very nice to see. I agree. I agree. Are we moving into the Northwest Upstate Illini, Brian Stocking? I think we can. Um, I just want to say with Mercer County, you know, um, 
Last week it was what David Meese, I think was his name. Had he had a big game tonight too. Big game tonight. He's he's been he's the uh, rain layer for Mercer County's resurgence. What's the? Um, he's the what? Rain layer for their resurgence. I still don't know the word you said. Rain leader. For ring the, leader okay. for their resurgence. Okay. What? Ring leader for their resurgence. How many yards do you have? Uh, that I could Come tonight. On, Scott Kyle. One hundred thirty-eight yards. Nice stuff about you. One hundred thirty-eight yards and two touchdowns. There you go. Oh, somebody, somebody was listening to WRMJ on the way home tonight. Well, I can't listen to WRMJ because I got to listen to Dazzo when he gets back, you know. (laughs) All right, let's jump into the Northwest Upstate Illini, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Fulton bounces back big time. They get a win over Stockton. Yes, 42 to 14. Big win for Fulton because this puts them at four and two. That means all they have to do is win one more game, and they'll be playoff eligible. And Dupec got the big win over Dakota. I saw that one. Lena Winslow went up to Chicago. I think they were on the road. Chicago to Paul, and they beat them. And I saw Galena and EPC win in overtime, but I never saw a final. Okay, I saw Galena was losing that game, so that's they interesting. Touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Okay. And he tied at 28 28, but I haven't seen a final yet. All right, well, this is the instant reacts. We don't have all the finals. We'll get them uh, on our show with me and Mitch on Tuesday. Stocking. I saw my Milledgeville Missiles, eight-man football, jumping down to eight-man. They had the big win over Orangeville. Number one in the state. Orangeville, yeah, is the number one team in the state for eight-man. Huge win for the Missiles. Connor Nye, another big night. 56-26, Milledgeville wins that game. That's a statement win. That's a nice W. That is is more than a statement win. I think Orangeville was, what, number one in in in, uh, the I-8F? I don't know what it is exactly, but yes, yeah. you're right on the right track. That's what it is, yes. Yeah. And yeah, they had, they've had some big wins, Orangeville has. And Milledgeville only lost to Polo in week one. Battle of the Blacktop. And they've played really well ever since, so big credit to the Missiles. That's a big win. The eight-man ranks is going to be really interesting come playoff time in their playoff divisions because the Northwest Upstate Illini looks so good right now in North in the eight man. Also, we could have another battle of the blacktop between Milledgeville and Polo. And Milledgeville and Polo, one of those ancient, long time rivalries. I know, you know, I love it. You know, backyard rivalries where they you know they talk about fifty years later. You can have a playoff game between these two. I mean, that's really exciting. Oh man, Stocking's already booking his ticket. Dazzo, wake up. We're still hey, recording. Dazzo, come on, come I'm on. good, I'm in, I'm in, let's go. He doesn't know where we're going. He doesn't. Where going. He doesn't. Amboy with a big win also. The Amboy beat Hiawatha tonight, 60 to 36. Uh, the quarterback, uh, Tucker Linder, Linden, Linden, Lindemeyer. Hi. What was that? Tucker what? Tucker Lindemeyer. Okay. He's off the uh, what? <laughs> All right, here we go. But Tucker Lindemeyer, I believe, is his name. Another big night for him and Amboy. And Amboy's uh, been sailing right along in the Haba. In the in the in the hob. I'm be, telling you, they'll be in the. Well, they were supposed to be in the hob next week against AFC, but AFC had to cancel out the rest of their season. Uh, they're low on numbers, and it's a really sad uh, story for them. But yeah, we're seeing that more and more, which is concerning. Um, but anyway, we focus on the positives here, Stock. I, I was positive. I think we're done. I think we've wrapped it up. Matt Randazzo, final thoughts. What do you got? Um, the matchups coming up. It seems like week eight, especially, but I'm excited to watch Sterling going to Rock Island next week. That's going to be a great matchup. Um, and then week eight with Sterling Moline and the LTC, and it just there's so many big games coming up. It's an exciting time of year, and um, we'll keep you covered on the podcast uh, view from the West Podcast, and then of course the score on WQAD. Uh, last thing for me, my final thought: my Marquette Crusaders. Moved a five and one on the year. I believe tonight they beat Leroy, Leroy. 20, Leroy. 21 to six. My dad was there on the PA, a PA announcing, making the call. My son was there watching it. So a big win for the crew. I love it. Sitting at five and one. It's an in- interesting year for them because they're playing independent. So it's kind of hard to tell, you know, what their schedule's been like. And- but. Uh, also, it's hard to get gauge where their opponents are in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stocking, I'm giving you a final thought, but I said singular thought. I'm going to be interested to see the teams that had heartbreaking losses tonight. Yep. How will they respond next week? For some of them, their playoff lives are on the line next week. They've got to come back with a strong response. Doom and, and gloom. No, I'm not being <laughs> doom and gloom, but I'm being truthful. 
those teams had a very you know heartbreaking losses. You know, you're looking at like a Galesburg. You know, we talked about Orion. We talked multiple about, thoughts. We talked. Yep, about he's Orion. getting. You're getting into multiple you know, thoughts here. Those teams <laughs> can they come back after the heartbreak and uh, put forth the effort to get into the playoffs? I agree. We're getting into that tough part of the year where it's like, man, reality sets in. Some teams are going to get knocked out of the playoffs. So that's. Some that's the careers are going to end. That's the fun and the heartbreak of all of it. Brian Stocking, Matt Randazzo, thank you for joining me. This is View from the West podcast, instant reacts for week six. Thank you so much to everybody who's listening. Join us again on Tuesday. Me and Mitch will have our podcast out to kind of break down everything that happened in week six. We'll have a little more uh, structure, well, a lot more structure, and a little more information on some of these games. And uh, we'll also preview week seven. Man, it's getting real. We're getting real close to playoff time. So fast. Yeah, it's gone really fast. So thank you so much to everyone who listened, and we will see you later.